Hello guys, Winston here. Apologies if I sound different today, I'm recording the dialogue for this video at my dad's house and by the time you see this video, I'll be in California on an epic thousand mile road trip. I've wanted to follow up on a previous Fusion 360 video for quite some time now, and the circumstances of my trip have given me the perfect opportunity to try out its 3D cam process. I'll be on the road for two weeks exploring the west coast and finishing off my journey at the Bay Area Maker Faire. To better document my adventure, and to occasionally help my friends put me in front of the camera without inducing acute nausea, I purchased a DJI Osmo Mobile. This is a 3-axis stabilizer that makes capturing smooth footage basically foolproof. It fits most phones and even a GoPro if you try hard enough, but the system has one flaw. It doesn't ship with arguably the most useful accessory, a docking base. Using the system requires balancing the phone, which can't be done with the Osmo laying on a table. Standing the gimbal upright makes the process a lot easier, but the accessory to do that doesn't come standard. It's an extra $10 plus shipping, which isn't all that expensive in the grand scheme of things, but on principle, I wanted to make my own. To do that, I first modeled an unnecessarily complex geometry for the base and extruded it upwards. You could start with the most basic of rectangles, but I figured if my dock would be spending a large amount of time on my desk, it might as well look interesting. Then I extruded a rectangular profile upwards with the internal dimensions that match the outer dimensions of my Osmos grip an inch from its bottom. The grip isn't front-back symmetric, but I figured my contraption would still be stable if I seated the Osmo deeply enough. To ensure a secure grip around the Osmo, I added in a draft angle so the supporting walls conformed better to the Osmos geometry. I tweaked the angle values so that the pocket's cross-section matched the taper of the handle. A couple chamfers and rounds completed the modeling. Now, because of the draft angles, chamfers, and fillets, this piece would need to be processed using 3D cam techniques. If you're interested in learning how to do 3D cam correctly, I'm going to direct you to Lars Christensen. He's an Autodesk guru who, unlike myself, knows what he's doing and does a great job of providing proper instructional content. Instead, what I'm going to do today, as always, is provide a quote-unquote overview of the features available to you should you choose to pursue the use of Fusion 360 for 3D Cam. To create a 3D toolpath, you follow the exact same process as you do in 2D workflows. You pick a cutting strategy, and then you select or define a boundary within which you want that strategy applied. So, to start out, I selected a pocketing operation which I want to use over the entire profile of the dock. This would clear away the vast majority of my stock, which was two pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood scraps glued together. I selected the outermost profile as my toolpath boundary. If you select two or more profiles, the machining operation will work between them. I did that in this case so I could work on the little chimney section separately. The last operation I wanted to do while I still had my quarter inch square end mill equipped was to cut out the majority of my profile, but leave a little of the floor uncut. I was going for something along the lines of onion skin work holding, but more substantial since I still had some serious cutting to do. It would also clear some space for my ball end mill to work on the sloped parts of my dock. I flip flop between scallop and contour cutting strategies for the chamfers, rounds, and draft angles. 3D contour cuts are generally best used for steep walls, while I find the scalloping strategy useful when you're mostly cutting near the tip of your end mill. You could probably do all of this with a single strategy, but I wanted to try different techniques and familiarize myself with their settings. Once I was done with all the detail work, I'd go back in with my square end mill and finish the cutout of my dock. These strategies all worked perfectly, though I almost didn't leave myself enough room to work in my stock. I had to move my clamps halfway through cutting. Once my plywood dock was all cut out, I went in with some 100 and 220 grit sandpaper to polish away the machining marks and blend the rounded edges a little more. After that, a generous coat of spray poly sealed the plywood and gave it a nice sheen. The dock works exactly as I intended and it does a great job of holding the Osmo upright while I mess around with it. This wraps up my first timid steps into the world of 3D cam in Fusion 360. As with my 2D experience, I found Fusion 360 to be very powerful, almost overwhelming with its options. But a reasonable knowledge of the basics, plus a healthy curiosity about learning the functionality of unfamiliar options, will get you through most situations. 
And that's all I have for this week. I'll have a ton more videos coming out when I get back from my Grand California adventure, including some about other projects I made for this trip, and maybe even a video or two from Maker Faire. If you live in the Bay Area, I hope to see you there. Follow me on Instagram or Twitter to find out when I'll be crashing the Carbide 3D booth. Thank you all very much for watching.